Hey everyone, Dick the Cat is really excited because as you probably know from the thumbnail, uh, we have something I'm very excited about today. Uh, a welcome to all the new subscribers. Um, there's been a whole, whole lot of them recently and, and thank you for subscribing and welcome. Uh, today is the Brio Santa Fe, which has a very, very striking resemblance to a Santa Fe, the railroad, Super Chief. And the Super Chief ran in the Southwest, as uh, the box depicts. I tried to do a little homework on this. This is not something I even knew existed until a few weeks ago. And I didn't have one as a kid because this came out in the 90s. And by by then I had long uh, outgrown my, my Brios. So this wasn't on my radar when it came out. And I got an original box, but no plastic tray, which has probably been thrown away or long since disintegrated. This was uh, a pricey item for me. I, I sometimes buy new Brio stuff, as you guys know from the channel, but, and I understand when that's expensive, but you don't expect to spend this much money on old Brio stuff, and we'll show this off a little bit. So we got the Iconic, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, but I, I thought it was important to do this video while I was still really excited about it. But as you can see, it's got the uh, iconic uh, Super Chief paint scheme that's called a war bonnet. And that's a red war bonnet. Or a red bonnet. And the passenger cars are a little bit different than what was prototypical on, on a real life Super Chief. On the real life thing, it was only the locomotive had the the red paint scheme, and the uh, passenger cars on the actual Super Chief were all just a a silver uh, streamlined uh, color. They're just a metal. They, they kind of look like Airstream trailers. <laughs> But um, they weren't, uh, they didn't have a red stripe. There were other Santa Fe trains that did. Uh, the California Zephyr, I believe, I might be getting my trains wrong, so I mean, let me know in the comments, but don't attack me. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and I'm tired and, and I'm not an expert on railroad history, but uh, the California Zephyr, uh, which was shared with a couple of railroads, but it had a, a locomotive that was painted, it, had, it was a yellow bonnet. So it was a silver, but with a yellow front. And that had a yellow stripe down the side and, and uh, Rio, uh, Denver, Rio Grande Railroad had a, a locomotive that kind of also matched with that. Now oh, there it is. Um, Brio's version of the Santa Fe Super Chief. I was so excited when I, when I saw this. I didn't think it was real or I thought it was a modern um, interpretation or something, but uh, let's see right up front. So Santa Fe, just like uh, just like the real thing. Sorry about my thumb there. I had no idea this existed, which is one of my, not a criticism, but as a kid, something I had wished was that Brio would, would make trains that were more like what I was seeing, you know, at the, at the you know, out in the real world. And um, this is definitely very, very cool. I, I would have loved this when I was little. So when did this come out? Well, these came out in the 90s, but I, I came across a couple different dates. Um, one source I used said 95, and another source said 97. And what I think's going on there, um, the ones that said 95, they had boxes. It had the same graphics, basically, but they were, they were uh, horizontal and not vertical. And I think maybe the European ones came out in 95, and then later on it was released uh, here in the United States in a vertical box. In 97 the copyright on this box is 97 so that's part of why I I think that <clears throat> and this is just I mean the super chief is probably certainly the the most iconic diesel locomotive uh, for a lot of people it's there um, depending on your age group of course but I mean even young people that this is recognized and and um, 
just really loved I, that 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 paint scheme. Um, this really does it for a lot of people, and this the red bonnet is kind of the most iconic of the the bunch. Um, so I mentioned they had they did have yellow bonnets and they have blue bonnets, and that's something that carried over uh, well into the more modern diesels before the Santa Fe merged with Burlington Northern. Um, there were uh, there were still blue bonnets and red bonnets. So the the F sevens these were some of the earliest uh, diesels. And the first uh, really common ones that you would see pulling passenger trains and stuff. These these came out after World War II, in the late 1940s. And they were, you could still see them in use in the early 1980s. Um, they were very common in the 50s and 60s. And this is, uh, like I said, this is uh, called an F7. It's an EMD F7. Well, that's what this is modeled after anyway. The uh, normal Super Chief would be like an EMD F7. And EMD stands for Electromotive Division. And if you're wondering what that was a division of, well, at the time it was a division of General Motors. You know, Chevrolet, Buick, Cadillac, all, the, all those good brands. Well, General Motors also made trains, including these uh, iconic ones. Um, later on, uh, GM sold EMD to Caterpillar, I believe, and um, I, they still make locomotives today, but, you know, back in, it was a interesting mixture of uh, art and design. This was before air travel was extremely common. People still traveled by rail, so the passenger trains especially had to look uh, very presentable and uh, sleek and had all kinds of awesome luxuries and services. I often think, um, and there's nothing wrong with traveling on Amtrak. I traveled on Amtrak quite a bit in the early 2000s, but um, I feel like when you see old video and uh, things of, of these streamliners from the 50s to 60s, I feel like uh, they were probably much nicer than today's Amtraks in, in many ways. So, there you go. There's some 411 for you on the uh, <laughs> on the F7. So here it is. No elaborate layout today or anything like that. I'm just um, getting over a cold and feeling kind of crummy. But I wanted to welcome all the new people that signed up over the holidays. Um, thank you very much and, and welcome. And there's going to be lots more Brio videos. And I, I hope to kind of highlight this on a layout sometime very soon. Um, and then after this video, after this video, so in the coming week, um, I've been trying to get my basement together here for a long time now. There's a lot of G scale. So I'm going to make a point to at least have a, a small G scale layout and we'll have that up and running. So next, the next two or three videos will probably be some G scale. Most of which will come out uh, in the next few days, and then then we'll go back to Brio, where I have a, I got a whole lot of Christmas goodies I want to share with you guys. And as you can see, I am making progress on getting organized. That's all my Pico uh, G scale on the shelf over there, and there's some LGB and other things back there. But uh, yeah, just getting over a cold, feeling kind of crummy, and and but uh, I had to order this. As you can see, the cat is very excited about it. Thank you very much for watching. If anybody has one of these or has any more information on the dates or anything like that, I'd, I'd love to know more. Um, I was just a little too old for this when it came out. Well, maybe a lot too old. I was a teenager. But, um, and it's it's apparently these are not, I don't know if I'd go so far as to call them rare, but finding one is not the easiest thing. Um, and I did have to pay for it. So in case you're wondering, um, I paid, um, I negotiated back and forth with the seller a bit on eBay. And I'm sure the fact that it's, uh, you know, has the original box and stuff added a bit to the price, but uh, I paid uh, 70 something. And by the time you factor in uh, the uh, tax and shipping costs and stuff, it was $90. So not, not something I'd normally spend on used Brio, but this is uh, 
this is one of those interesting exceptions where it's just like, you know, I, I didn't know about this and I really, really, really just had to have it. So the wheels are kind of flanged there, but um, I think we're still in that era where these were made in Sweden and not China and the wheels are very, very, very straight and not wobbly. And these are just uh, solid as all, can all, uh, solid as all get out, I guess. So, all right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, again, welcome to all the new people and I will see you next time.